Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Whoa, what happened in here, guys? I've been working on this all day. You remember all that mess? All right, it's no more. We've got like echo in this room now. I've got four guitars to unpack today, and we have a paper tutorial of how to pack case candy. Sometimes I get loose case candy. If you ever have any of this stuff just sitting around, it sells really fast online. I'm sure most people are using this for honest reasons, but yeah, I'm sure there's some fakers that buy this stuff as well. But hey, it doesn't do me any good to have this sitting around. So I usually sell these in like $20 lots and they sell really quickly. So a real easy pack job here. I just wrap it in bubble wrap. <laughs> While I was cleaning this room, I found a bunch of tape, guys. So I've got these drawers down here, right? Look at all that tape. These are four deep. And it's not just one drawer. It's like two drawers. <laughs> Organization is great. So that's it for this. Let's get to the fun stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, but I won't tell you which one it is. But there is a guitar within this group that is going to be as historically of a significant video as the Headless SG. This is not one you want to skip through. So let's go ahead and start with this one. Now this is a guitar that I believe came from Austria and a fan of the show reached out to me. They loved the review of the SGZ I did a long time ago. And they were curious if I'd be interested in reviewing the original. Now the original it's part of that series of that really freaky Explorer we did a review on, and that was called the E-90. And then you also had the SG-90 and the V-90. Now, I think this series of guitars is really cool. I definitely want to review, you know, one of each. So when the opportunity arose, I thought, okay, all right, let's do it. It took us quite a while to make a deal on this guitar just because of time difference and whatnot. And I'll be honest, I wasn't that motivated to buy this guitar. And I'll tell you the reason why in a second. And that's because this has been repaired. Not a headstock repair, but yeah, when I open this case, you're gonna understand. This thing having this chainsaw case though, that was a big plus as to why I purchased it. It's clearly not the original case. Uh, let's see if she made it. <laughs> Okay, so this is the SG version that we'll do a nice full review on. And the Steinberger Tremolo. Remember this one? You see it on that yellow Les Paul video, which is kind of like the Les Paul version of this series. But it's not official. But these things are garbage because from the factory, the studs aren't strong enough to actually support string tension for a long period of time, so they lean. They said they fixed it, but um, it's kind of leaning still. So I'm not, not sure what's going on there. I'll have to ask him about that. Action looks a little bit high there. Take a look at the neck. Oh boy, yeah, that needs adjusted. Maybe that's why the action looks a little high. So this one, uh, it's a bit of a fixer upper, I think, but it'll make for a good review. Um, and uh, yeah, then I can say I've done one of these. I think I'll go for this one because this box looks good and I honestly don't know what is in it. I have a hunch of what's in it. I think it's a Les Paul Custom. We'll see if I'm right. Does anybody know where to get this tape? I mean, that's like the really nice fiber enriched tape. I wouldn't have to use so much of this other stuff if I could just get my hands on some of that. Packing peanuts. I guess we haven't really discussed this before. There's different kinds of packing peanuts. This is the best kind of packing peanut. They don't splinter, they don't break, they just kind of twist up and they'll like dissolve in water. This is not so bad to clean up. This is the worst kind. It just splinters and makes a mess. So let's see if we can get this out without making a mess. Okay. 
inside we have oh, oh, oh my gosh i didn't know it was gonna look like this oh wow i really wish i would have bought more from this seller because he had this like whole collection he described this as wine red but that is not wine red do you guys see this holy crap this is like a, a cranberry color it's almost slightly purple. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's hope there's not a headstock break. Yes. Wow. Oh. This isn't a fake reaction, guys. I was not expecting it to look quite this nice. Yeah, can't wait to do a review on this one. That's something special. Let's do this one. Got some eBay tape. You guys remember last time when I had to undo eBay tape? That was a mess. Huh. Hendrix. Hmm. Made in China, what am I doing buying something made? Gibson? Hendrix? Gibson. Guitar package. Uh-oh, guys, what did I find? <laughs> All of these were supposed to be destroyed. This guitar is not meant to exist. This is the Gibson Hendrix Strat. I'm gonna just totally tease you guys. I'm not even gonna open this box yet because this is gonna be such an epic video. So hype it up because I expect this to be my new number one video. And you know, I'm gonna do this video in style. But yeah, apparently one of these made it out alive. Don't be upset with me yet. You'll see it soon enough. When do you guys want it? Let me know in the comments section. I'm thinking it's the craziest not so fender Friday ever, but I definitely need time to create that video. But this guitar, I think it is just as cool as that one, if not even better. And I'm very happy I found one of these. This is a reissue, a very, very iconic guitar. And it's a guitar that not a lot of people even know. This one's a little nerve wracking to open because if this was broken, I don't know if I'd ever be able to forgive myself. Oh, and by the way, this is how Gibson packs their stuff. They don't even have this stuff in it, that's added. It's just this. So the guitar flops around in there all day long. I don't see how the new stuff makes it in one piece. Notice there's nothing on the outside of this case and yet it says gibson custom right here this is not just any r6 this is the best guitar that has ever been reissued in my opinion the day that I saw this guitar get posted on Gibson's Instagram account, I wanted to rush to my computer and make a wiring out of this so badly, but I didn't because I don't remember what happened. But why does this Les Paul have a crown? Well, you'll just have to wait for the full review on this one. But this is such a fantastic Norlin era reissue. It has to be the most iconic guitar that Henry J could have done before he left. All right, so thanks for watching this unboxing video. Sorry for being such a tease, but that's gonna be a big one. But let me run something by you guys here. I've been doing some rearranging today. And what do you guys think about me switching over to what is called the Two Notes Torpedo Digital Load Box. If you're not familiar with what it is, it basically takes away my need to have to mic a cabinet and it lets me have different cabinets. 
So it still utilizes my Mesa Boogie or my Freedman, it just helps emulate different speaker cabinets. So it's still a real amp, it's still the real guitar being played through. So if you're familiar with one of these, is there a cabinet you would like to see me always use? Or do you guys just hate this idea completely and do I need to take it back to Sweetwater? The whole idea is that I can record at any time and it might actually sound better as compared to my limited miking skills. I also upgraded my audio interface from this old Roland Duo Capture, which I still use for my voiceover work. But I recently started to use that for like miking up the cabinets and running things like that. And hey, if you stuck around this long in this video, I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek here.